Hello community, I hope you are doing good. In this discussion, we will see what is manifest file and what is the purpose. And in case you missed previous discussion about how to add custom add-ons and how to visible custom add-ons in the local Odoo app store, please check link is given in the description. And if you want to learn more about Odoo, you can visit the Weblens channel. Under the home screen, you can see Odoo 17 development tutorial is available and this is the main playlist and if you want to learn more about Odoo with the different topics you can visit the Odoo development and here you can see older versions of the Odoo you can see here different topic wise with the real test cases available this playlist all right so let's back to the main topic what is manifest file guys if you remember in our last discussion we went to the Odoo app store right apps here let's say we open this screen right the form view of this module so you can see here the basic informations about this module right this is coming from the manifest file manifest file keeps the modules all the metadata informations okay so let's say in our case i'm trying to open the accounting module right and i'm going to the manifest file so this manifest.py file underscore underscore manifest underscore underscore dot py file this is python file which is mandatory and it's only have a python dictionary key and values nothing more here what kind of informations you can see here right let's say this manifest file is only belongs to this account module right same likewise this modules manifest file you can see this one because this manifest file contains only the informations about this module so here you have to remember this main point another thing is what is inside this manifest file right so this is simple a dictionary python dictionary which contains the key and the value pair here you can see key and the value pair right let's discuss one by one so here let me minimize so you can see this is a simple dictionary format you can see here the first thing is the name right the name is the invoicing so this is the module name in the app store so once you go to here and if you search account right you can see this one this invoicing so this is the module name you can mention and in your case let's say you are trying to create a custom modules so the name should be your main module name so in this case it's invoicing right you can see here after that you can see here the category invoices and the payment so this is the category of this module so there are a lot of categories available you can see here right in the list view you can see account chart accounting administrator right crm calendar context data cleaning so on so you can see here 68 categories is available let's say if you didn't define the category it goes to under this category uncategorized all right so here you can just mention here this category and if you mention something the forward slash right so it's a parent and child category so parent category is this accounting inside the accounting this is the subcategory okay so let's say you want to maintain such way right so you can easily create like this when auto automatically handle or let's say recognize this category and it will display like that way okay and yeah let's go to here in this account module apps and here uh, sorry about that so you can see here this is the category not this one all right so this is the sort description i mean the summary so summary you can see it store as a character you can add as much character and it will display after the module name here in the kanban view you can see like this in the you can see this one the invoicing this is the main module name which you provide here in the name key and this account is the directory name so this one the module name 
the technical module name okay so here there is a one more important notice sometimes the developer mode is not activated right so in that case this technical module name is not visible so for that you can just active the developer mode from the browser extension right or if you don't have that extension you can go to the settings in the general settings you can go to the bottom of this page and you can see here active the developer mode okay uh, i already activated so you can see here active the developer mode with assets and the test assets right that is fine now if you again go to the apps you can see here the module name you can the technical module name is visible let me go to again here in the settings deactivate the developer mode again i'm going to here you can see here the mode technical name is not visible right here and here you can see from quotation to invoice and let's say here it's displayed the summary of this module okay once i active the developer mode you can see the module name is also display so let me go to here in the module info okay and now you can see the version so version we are maintaining uh, different ways okay i will also explain you in our upcoming session like how you can maintain the version let's say you created first time there is a one bug is there right you can also maintain the bug if you have a like new enhancement in the existing module so you can just increase these versions so this version also display in the manifest file you can see here so right now this is the prefix always 17.0 and after that this one based on the fixing something or extend the modules you can just increase one by one okay what it is i will explain in our further session now let's say the summary summary we already know right after this module name it will display in the summary here now the sequence sequence is 10 by default every module sequence is 10 so sequence is lash then 10 the priority of display the modules here in this app store it becomes the high priority so once i remove the apps you can see here the sales management pos management pos restaurant and accounting accounting is the third one right and if i'm going to the module list you cannot see here actually the sequence but let's say if i'm adding here the one right and again i'm active the odoo service refresh the screen going to the app store update the module list and refresh the screen sorry i'm closing this service another thing is in the technical from the terminal i started this auto service so i'm using this one in the pycharm so now let's say i'm going to refresh the screen right and once i update the module you can see the sequence would be changed it comes to the fast right so like this way you can maintain your modules like the visibility you want to show always the first one here it's up to you so this is the purpose of the sequence the description is also the long description which you have like uh, along with the screenshots and all you can maintain in the description right but for the specially for the screenshot and all you have to create one html file and you have to describe your module feature so here let's say i'm going to the module info here in the below you can see those informations okay but right now at the moment you cannot see so this is the part of the description then after the category we already know then after the website right let's say you created a new module the custom module you can add your website name if you have or if you didn't mention here the website by default it will tag this website name www.odoo.com okay another thing is the depends so let's say before 
you install this module right so Odoo automatically install these modules if it's not installed so this is the main benefit of this depends key right and you can also see here in the technical data and how many dependent modules available and what is the status here after that in the data you can add the xml file the csv files right like how to create xml file or the csv file forgot about that one but you can just remember let's say you can create a multiple views right let's say the list view form view like that so those code you have to write inside this xml files like this so these files we must have to register under this data key so once you upgrade or install the module so it will load sequence wise like this so you can see here the account module is very huge right very big in terms of the files so we have to just list down here everything don't worry about the specification i will explain everything then after the demo same like data but let's say if you remember while i create a new database i'm always check mark in the database creation demo data load demo data right so in this case when i install any module and that module having a demo data so it will automatically install these files my database is unchecked that load demo data as a uncheck then during the upgrade or installation time it won't be load this key okay so you can see here in the invoicing you can see list of dummy invoices is here right so this, this is basically the it will load from this demo.xml file so this is the main purpose of this demo after the installation by default it's a true if you mention as a false that means it's not installable at all okay then after the application application having also the same thing let's say here boolean value you have to provide true or false by default it's a false but you have to make sure let's say the accounting is the main feature right so this is the main module accounting so that means it's an application but let's say there is a sub modules of this accounting right so it's not treated as application because this is the main functionality of the accounting this module having so this means we can maintain as application equal to true then after the license by default it's a lgpl-3 for the community version okay you can have also like there are a lot of license version available i'm not going to discuss every license but you can also copy paste this one in your manifest file another thing is the assets in odoo there is a two frameworks available one is the backend which is written in the python which called as a orm framework and in the front end side it's called the oval framework right so all the oval code the scss css file js file or the templates the components right you have to register under these different assets files so you have to just mention in a which assets you are trying to extending uh, don't worry about everything this assets parts i will cover in our upcoming session what is up assets and how to use okay so this is basically the assets same like the this xml file the views file we are trying to register in the data for the backend same like front end frameworks we have to maintain like this one to register in these assets all right there is a few keys also not available here which is missing the init hook post init so post init is, is available uninstalled hook oh sorry uninstall hook right then auto install so this is the bool value and maintainer the last one is the external dependency so let's say once you install this module after you have to do some crude operations with the database or let's say something you want to perform some actions right so in this case you can use post in it hook before the installation right this module you want to perform some operation you can just use pre init hook and once you uninstall this module you want to also perform such operation during that time you can use uninstall hook what is hook i already explained for the older version for the up so this three these two 
and this one is specially for the hook related feature another thing is the maintainer right like who is maintaining this module so they can just use the name of that person or the company name that is also fine you can also add multiple person name the company name like this okay after that let's say there is a some python libraries dependencies right you want to also add you can use the external dependency so once you mention here the specific package name right for the python after that let's say if you try to install this module and that python package is not available then first thing is it will automatically raise the warning message let's say this library is not available please install first this one that library and after you can install this module so this is all about the external dependency and this is auto underscore install by default it's a false right and auto install means let's say if i'm trying to install this module cell underscore management and and this mrp work order once i install this module automatically this module also install without i click to the install module right you have to just simple use here auto underscore install equal to true and in the dependency you have to man in our upcoming session i will give you the same example all right so this is the basic information about the manifest file so it contains the metadata of the specific module let's say in our case this account module okay so i hope you understood what is manifest file what is the purpose of this manifest file if you have any doubt related this topic please comment below and see you in our next session and our next session would be the depends so how you can use the depends key wisely so see you there